7 most common forms of controlling the options. Color the choices. As President Richard Nixon's Secretary of State, Kissinger considered himself better informed than his boss and believed that in most situations he could make the best decision on his own. Kissinger would propose three or four choices of action for each situation and would present them in such a way that the one he wanted would sound the most superior. His choice would be so obvious that even a fool would see it. This is an excellent device to use on the insecure master. Force the resistor. One of the main problems faced by Dr. Milton H. Erickson, a pioneer of hypnosis therapy in the 1950s, was the relapse. His patients would soon relapse into old habits, blame the doctor and stop coming to see him. To avoid this, Erickson began ordering some patients to have a relapse, to make themselves feel as bad as when they first came in, to go back the square one. Faced with these options, the patients would usually choose to avoid the relapse, which of course was what Erickson really wanted. Alter the playing field. In the 1860s, John D. Rockefeller set out to create an oil monopoly. He began secretly buying up the railway companies that transported the oil. When he then attempted to take over a particular company, he reminded them of their dependence on the rails. Refusing them shipping or simply raising their fees could ruin their business. Rockefeller altered the playing field so that the only options the small oil producers had were the ones he gave them. The Shrinking Options The late 19th century art dealer Ambroise Vollard perfected this technique. Customers would come to Vollard's shop to see some Kezan. He would show three paintings, neglect to mention a price, and pretend to doze off. The visitors would have to leave without deciding. They would usually come back again and again, and would be shown paintings of lesser value every time. Finally, the buyers would realize they had better grab what he was showing them, because tomorrow they would have to settle for something worse, perhaps at even higher prices. The Weak Man on the Precipice The weak are the easiest to maneuver by controlling their options. Cardinal de Ritz, the great 17th century provocator, served as an unofficial assistant of the Duke of Orleans, who was notoriously indecisive. Ritz discovered a way to handle him. He would describe all sorts of dangers, exaggerating them as much as possible, until the Duke saw a yawning abyss in every direction except one, the one Ritz was pushing him to take. Brothers in Crime This is a classic con artist technique. You attract your victims to some criminal scheme, creating a bond of blood and guilt between you. They participate in your deception, commit a crime and are easily manipulated. Serge Stavisky, the great French con artist of the 1920s, so entangled the government in his scams and swindles that the state did not dare to prosecute him and chose to leave him alone. The Horns of a Dilemma this idea was demonstrated by General William Sherman's infamous march through Georgia during the American Civil War. Although the Confederates knew what direction Sherman was heading in, they never knew if he would attack from the left or the right, for he divided his army into two wings, and if the rebels retreated from one wing, they found themselves facing the other. But be warned, this tactic works best for those whose power is fragile, and who cannot operate too openly without incurring suspicion, resentment and anger. As a rule, it is rarely wise to be seen as exerting power directly and forcefully. It is usually more elegant and more effective to give people the illusion of choice. There are situations in which it is to your advantage to allow your rivals a large degree of freedom. As you watch them operate, you give yourself rich opportunities to spy, gather information and plan your deceptions.